What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Slam Dunkin' YouTube channel. Today, I want to talk about the idea of Lonzo Ball going to the Bulls. And if Lonzo does go to the Bulls, which is looking like a possibility here, the Bulls need to add another guard. And more specifically, a playmaking guard next to Lonzo. Or come off the bench, right? I honestly think that if Lonzo Ball goes to the Bulls, the Bulls still have a lack of playmaking and a lack of shot creating. And that's a problem. And... I think, honestly, the Bulls need to add someone like Rose, someone like T.J. McConnell, or someone off the bench that can then also be playing in crunch time, and you can also move Lonzo to the wing, where I think he is more effective. But before we get into it, though, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. In the comment section for this video, go ahead and leave a comment down below, but please be respectful. Don't just scream at me saying, you're stupid, Lonzo Ball is a point guard, Okay. If you want to have a conversation on this, be respectful. Say, I disagree. You have the right to your opinion. I have the right to my opinion. But let's just be respectful, okay, in the comment section. Um, and before I get into any of this video, I want to make something very, very clear to everyone. Just because I'm pointing out someone's flaws in their game does not mean that I think they're a bad player. Does not mean I hate them. Does not mean I have a negative connotation of them. I have the right to point out flaws in people's games. But that does not mean I hate them. That does not mean I say that they're a terrible player. I could do this with Zach Levine right now. I love Zach Levine, but I could say he's a horrible off-ball defender. And we're seeing that right now in the Olympics, right? But that does not mean that I think he's a bad player. Does That, that does not mean I hate him, okay? I'm going to be pointing out flaws in, in Lonzo Ball's game. But again, I don't hate Lonzo Ball. I don't think he's a bad player. In fact, I like Lonzo Ball. I like the player that Lonzo Ball has become. But... When I look at this Bulls team, this Bulls team desperately, desperately needs playmaking, right? And I don't think Lonzo provides that. And everyone calls Lonzo a playmaking point guard, right? But I'm going to show you why I don't think that's the case. First off, let's talk about playmaking, right? Playmaking is, it kind of requires, you know, three things, right? One is the ability to break down the defense, whether that is your defender or through a pick and roll, right? You have to break down the defense. Number two, because you broke down that defense, you have the gravitational pull of bringing in an extra defender to guard you, right? So it takes more than one defender to actually guard you from, you know, doing what you actually want to, right? And then number three is the ability to also have that vision and be able to pass the ball accurately to a target and also in, in rhythm and in time, okay? That's playmaking, right? And usually playmaking comes from the point guard position, but as we saw in the NBA Finals, that's not always the case. It can come from Giannis, you know, at power forward or center. It can come from Chris Middleton at small forward, right? But it can also come from, you know, shooting guards and, and all that, this and that. But at the end of the day, when I look at the point guard position, most of the time, you know, most playmaking comes from there. And even when someone like Jokic, right, who's an incredible passer, incredible playmaker, he still has that point guard in Jamal Murray who is also a playmaker, right? The point guard position is very important in the NBA. We saw with the Clippers, right? We had, you know, they desperately needed a point guard. Even though they have Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, they don't really have a playmaker where they're like, oh, I have that vision and also the ability to ball handle and create my own shot, but also, you know, pass the ball very effectively to someone else, okay? And I think a perfect example of a, you know, a guard that plays the PG position but does not have playmaking skills is Patrick Beverly, right? We see guys, you know, play the point guard position, but they're not exactly a playmaker, right? They're more of a 3 and D type player. I think Patrick Beverly is the definition of a 3 and D player, but he's short, so he plays the point guard position. So, now, don't twist my words. I think Lonzo Ball is a much better player than Patrick Beverly. He's a better shooter, better defender, better ball handler, better rebounder, better passer. Like, just don't twist my words. I'm just saying that I do think Lonzo Ball kind of falls more into that wing player or 3 and D player than he falls into that playmaking. And I think the Bulls desperately need playmaking for this team. The only playmaking that they have really is Zach Levine and Vucevic in the post. That is not enough in today's game as we saw. And I tweeted this out mostly looking at the fourth quarter. And I, I made it abundantly clear on this channel and also on my Twitter that I'm not that high on Lonzo Ball to the Bulls. I don't like the idea of paying him 20 plus million a year. But more importantly, I don't like, I just don't think that he fixes all these problems that the Bulls fans see, right? The Bulls fans saw, like, hey, like, we need a, a point guard that can play make and have the ability to run the pick and roll and also create their own shot and get guys open, right? 
if the point guard position was all about just, you know, great passing, then I could point at a bunch of other players that were like, yeah, they're not point guards, but they're incredible passers. But there's a reason why they're not, you know, playmakers or the main ball handlers or initiators, right? Lonzo Ball, I think, is a fantastic passer, especially in transition. He He's going to throw on-target passes. But does he have the ability to create shots for his own teammates? Does he have the ability to create his own shot? This is something that is almost desperately, like, it's almost a requirement at a point guard position at this point, right? I mean, look at what Reggie Jackson did to the Clippers without Kawhi Leonard in the last two games against the Jazz. Like, Jackson turned around the Clippers just because he's a playmaking point guard that can get his own shot, but also create open shots for his teammates. That's what the Clippers were needing, right? Look at what Chris Paul did for, for uh, the Phoenix Suns with Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton, right? That's the reason why this point guard position is so important for the Bulls. And, you know, I tweet this out because I think, you know, Lonzo is probably, there's a good chance that Lonzo comes to the Bulls. But if that's the case, then I need to see Karnaschovas go out and get like someone like Derrick Rose, who I mentioned in this post, or Jalen Brunson, or TJ McConnell, a guy that can come off the bench, but also play big minutes and, you know, play in crunch time and be the main initiator, main playmaker for this Bulls team. The idea of Lonzo Ball handling the ball late game is not really enticing because Lonzo Ball does not have the ability to play make. Like, it is not very good when it comes to Lonzo Ball's playmaking. That could change, but right now Lonzo Ball does not have that ability. And I think getting someone like Rose or another guard off the bench who can play in crunch time and play the PG, it will help this Bulls team drastically. And I'm going to show you right now why I think Lonzo really falls under the, you know, 3 and D or wing category more than the point guard category or playmaker category right here and right now. So, again, I talked about it's it point guard position isn't just about passing, okay? If we if the point guard position was all just about assists constantly, then I'm going to throw right back at you to all those people who are like, "Well, Lonzo Ball has 17 assists in a game. How dare you say he's not a point guard?" Well, you know who had a 13 game uh, 13 assist game this season? Kobe White. And every single one of you Bulls fans are calling Kobe White a shooting guard. And I even agree with that statement. Because if you think about it, Kobe White has the ability to break down a defense. He has the ability to draw multiple defenders. But what he lacks is the ability to have that vision and the passing ability to throw it to that open teammate. He does not have that vision. He does not have that passing ability, right? With Lonzo Ball, it's the opposite. He has that vision. He has that great passing ability and that vision to get it to an open teammate. But he lacks the ability to break down his defender, but also, you know, pull multiple defenders towards him to open up his teammates for open shots. So Lonzo instead has become more of a 3 and D type player and specifically a great three-point shooter, but more specifically a catch-and-shoot three-point shooter. And a catch-and-shoot three-point shooter sounds more like a wing, right? And I'm going to show you some stats right now that kind of shows you that Lonzo gears more towards the like wing archetype than a playmaker archetype. First off, let's look at this catch and shoot frequency. So this is, you know, how many shots, you know, uh, out of all the shots that you took this season, how many were catch and shoot? How frequent is your catch and shoot game? Or how many times you shoot uh, catch and shoot in a game? And 47% of the time, Lonzo Ball, his shots are a catch and shoot shot. So keep that in mind. 47%, okay? Now, let's look at Cal Lowry, who I think is very obviously a point guard. That number is at 26%. That is much, much lower, as you can see. And this is, you know, a big difference between, like, the main playmakers of today's game and versus the wing players of today's game. Again, keep this in mind. Let's move on to Derrick Rose. Catch and shoot, 15%. Now, Derrick Rose is also a person that it looks to drive towards the rim a lot more. But, again, 15%. And, by the way, this number of catch and shoot you know, that goes down in the playoffs, okay? Goran Dragic, catch and shoot, 29%. It's, again, much, much lower, all right? Now, let's move on. So, let's, reminder, 47% for Lonzo Ball. Let's move on to some of the wings, okay? Joe Ingles, 39% catch and shoot rate. That's pretty high, right? That is a very high number. Tim Hardaway Jr., obviously a, a wing player. He depends on Luka Doncic to get him the ball, 41% catch and shoot rate. And last but not least is Mikel Bridges, and his number is at 46.9%. And that's, you know, that kind of makes a lot of sense. But again, Mikel Bridges is very obviously a wing player. And he depends on Chris Paul and Devin Booker to get him his shots, right? So keep this in mind. Now, next thing I want to talk about is, you know, the ability to create your own shot, right? 
playmaking also comes with you know your own shot creating ability your the ability to shoot off the dribble the ability to uh come off the pick and roll and also shoot the ball right and unfortunately with Lonzo I don't think he has the ability really to come off a screen of like a pick and roll a play and shoot a wide up or shoot an 18 footer or pull up 18 footer like Chris Paul was able to do that very effectively but it's not just Chris Paul who does that I mean Derek Rose is an incredible mid-range game Goran Dragic we we see it all the time against the Bulls when he plays very well that he can shoot you know a pull-up shot from really anywhere off a screen right but Lonzo Ball doesn't have that ability and this shows you like right here why like his like, the amount of shots that he takes to have zero dribbles involved, which is mostly catch and shoot, but there is, you know, some isolation, right? But mostly catch and shoot shots with zero dribbles, right? 51%. That's a high number for a dude that is supposed to be the playmaker, right? If 51% of your shots are zero, come off zero dribbles, that's, you know, that's not very good. And as you can see, a lot of his shots, you know, like, it's, like, that's more than half, and then the rest of it, like, he doesn't really shoot that much when he takes a lot more dribbles now let's compare this to Kyle Lowry right Kyle Lowry that number of zero dribbles for for each shot is 28 percent that's much lower than Lonzo Ball again Lonzo's in the 50s Kyle Lowry's at 28 percent and as you can see here the three to six dribble shots and the seven plus dribble shots are a much higher number Derek Rose um zero dribble shots 18 percent and then as you can see this is also very high Goran Dragic is actually a little bit different here as, as like his frequency of zero dribble shots is much higher but as you can see here he can still get you know get his shots off when he takes multiple dribbles now again Lonzo Ball zero dribble shots 51% of the time Joe Ingles as we move down here Joe Ingles zero dribble shots 40% of the time now here's the thing with Joe Ingles I think Joe Ingles is also you know a very versatile player the Jazz use Joe Ingles as an initiator as well and also as like a playmaker too. He is also a very good passer, but obviously he shouldn't be the main ball handler, right? But he can be that secondary or even third option ball handler. And as you can see, he can actually kind of, you know, get his shot mostly at the rim off multiple dribbles. But still though, when he's shooting at the three-point line, it's mostly just, you know, catch and shoot three. Tim Hardaway Jr., zero dribble shots 46% of the time. That's a lot. Again, a lot. And he depends on Luka Doncic. Now, he has the ability also to kind of take that step back shot, but most of his shots come off zero dribbles. And Mikel Bridges is, uh, you know, his is drastic. I mean, he really depends on other uh, other players setting his setting him up. As you can see, zero dribble shots, 65%. He's also a very good cutter, so this also kind of plays into that as um, he gets shots at the rim, you know, taking zero dribbles, but it's because he's cutting very, very well. He is one of the best cutters in the league. But as you can see, very little uh, shots taken off multiple dribbles, right? So, as you can see right here, I am showing you that Lonzo's stats when it comes to his shooting is very is much more similar to these wing players. And, by the way, when I say that Joe Ingles is very versatile, Joe Ingles averaged four assists last season. He's out. He's also averaged five assists in the season. And Lonzo averaged seven or uh, five assists this season so it's kind of I'm just trying to show you that like Lonzo kind of more falls into that versatile wing player right not necessarily a primary playmaker uh category second thing I want to point out to you is this I talked about how you know you know zero dribbles is a like catch and shoot the teammates set you up well now we can actually like really see it here this is this shows right here assisted versus unassisted shots made that the, the assisted shots made is when a teammate sets you up and a teammate gets an assist for you making a shot. And unassisted is you, you know, basically kind of creating your own shot and no teammate gets an assist for you when you make a shot. So Lonzo Ball, and out of his 290 made shots this season, 193 were assisted, which means that, again, 193 times a teammate got an assist when he made a shot, which kind of shows you, right, that a teammates have to set him up to make the majority of his shots. So... Again, 193. This is about 66%. So 193 divided by 290, it's about 66%. That's a high number. All right. Let's move on to Kyle Lowry. Now, again, I'm not saying that uh, a P the PG position or primary, primary playmaker has to have, you know, more unassisted shots made than assisted. But these numbers, I think, have to be pretty close to each other for it to obviously show you that you have the ability to create your own shot or be able to create separation and, and make your own shot right 
And Kyle Lowry, as we saw, doesn't take that many. Like he, his frequency of zero dribble shots is much lower than Lonzo Ball. But he's still, you know, under because he has Fred Van Fleet next to him and also Pascal Siakam, right? He still is going to get a bunch of, you know, catch and shoot threes or you know, a bunch of cuts to the rim. But again, though, these this is a much closer, you know, comparison, right? Like if you compare it to Lonzo with his, like it's very drastic. Obviously, like seeing that. He needs other people to set him up. With Kyle Lowry, like, he can get his own shot, okay? Derrick Rose is obviously much different. And as you can see here, most of his shots are him making his own shot. And then, you know, not that, not as many shots were assisted. Goran Dragic, you know, he has more assisted made shots than Lonzo Ball. Or, or sorry, than unassisted. Um, but he obviously can make his own shot. Uh, create that separation and make his own make uh, make a shot off his own uh, shot creating ability. So this is what I'm talking about here. Keep this in mind. Point guards, you know, like actual playmakers, you know, they kind of, they tend to have like, they're either, you know, getting, you know, making both of these or as you saw with Derrick Rose, it's more unassisted, right? And obviously when we talk about like Damian Lillard and Steph Curry, Russell Westbrook, like, you know, they're a different category. I'm talking about just like really solid point guards here. And I, I think these guys that I chose are pretty fair comparisons because they, they're they all really good three-point shooters, right? But they're also not, none of them are like superstars and none of them are scrubs, right? So moving on here. So let's look at Lonzo Ball one more time. 193 assistant made shots. Now let's look at the wing position. Now Joe Ingles, most of his shots are, are assisted. But as you can see, he is also able to make, you know, unassisted shots. But as you can see right here, most of his assistant made shots are from three-point range, which it kind of goes back to what we showed here that, as you can see, like 39% of his, 40% uh, of zero dribble shots is from three-point range, which is, again, teammates setting him up. So Joe Ingles is, you know, he's very versatile, which is why, like, this number is a lot higher, Right. But he is still, you know, very versatile. But again, he's a wing player. He is not the primary playmaker, right? Joe Ingles has the ability to get to the rim actually pretty effectively, which is the reason why this is higher. But, you know, those unassisted shots, which is mostly his threes, you know, it comes from teammates setting him up. Tim Hardaway Jr., as you can see right here, most of his shots are assisted. This is Luka Doncic setting him up, right? Luka Doncic driving, kick out, Tim Hardaway Jr., bang, right? As you can see, most of his assisted shots are from three and last but not, last but not least is Mikel Bridges and this is obviously just drastic I mean this is Chris Paul Devin Booker you know setting this dude up and as you can see he mostly like basically his entire offense is his teammates setting him up but again as we look at this compared to Lonzo Ball Lonzo Ball very obviously as you can see his numbers compare more t similarly to the wing players than to the guard players right Lonzo Ball most of his shots made are from teammates setting him up. 66% of the time, his teammates set him up for him to make a shot. That's pretty high. So, as I'm showing you this, I'm trying to make it a point to you guys that Lonzo Ball, you know, his own shot making ability is not that high. And even as, and because of that, it hurts his ability to play make. And, you know, this, that's, you know, not saying he's a bad player, but because he really is just a fantastic catch and shoot three point guy. That's what he's more geared towards. He is more geared like his success is just more geared towards being a catch and shoot three point guy. But also, you know, he has that versatility where he can handle the ball and he can defend multiple positions. He can rebound very well. But when it comes to playmaking for this Bulls team, he is not going to be the answer to that problem. This Bulls team needs an extra playmaker that can be alongside Levine and make so make it make it that Levine does not have to be that sole playmaker on the team. And that's the reason why I tweeted this out and I'm saying that Karnashovas needs to get if he gets Lonzo Ball, which again is looking like a real possibility here, that he needs to get another PG that is a playmaker that can come in and specifically be effective in crunch time because Lonzo Ball is not going to be that effective in crunch time, especially in a half-court offense, because we see with Lonzo, most of his assists come from his accurate passing in, in transition. But that's, you know, throwing the guy the ball when the guy is running, right? That's a bit different when it's a half-court defense, when the defense is set. Do you have the ability to pull over an extra defender when the defense is set and then hit the open man? 
I don't think Lonzo Ball has that ability. And I hope to God that he shows, he proves me wrong here because if Lonzo does have this ability, right, and he's able to actually, you know, become that point guard where he is able to hit that pull up 18 footer, but also draw multiple defenders over and kick it out to a wide open three point shooter, the Bulls' ceiling raises drastically. But I don't think he's able to actually do that. And the reason being is because, as you can see here, look at how many shots are from three point range. 455 of his 700 total field goal attempts were from three-point range this season. And as we saw, a lot of them were catch-and-shoot three-point shots. And that's, I think, about 65% of his shots were from three-point range. That does not scream playmaker to me. That screams 3 and D type player, right? Um, but also, as you can see here, he does not take that many mid-range shots, which could be, you know, Stan Van Gundy kind of ruining him a little bit there. But it's also just today's NBA game, and that's a problem. I mean, Zach Levine and Kobe White, like, we saw that they're great you know, mid-range shooters, and you need that mid-range game, and we saw in the playoffs, for God's sake. The mid-range game is very, very important, right? And not only that, Lonzo Ball, his, like, when he shoots at the rim, like, it, this needs to get better. Like, at the rim, he's overall pretty okay, but he needs to get better at this because his inability to really finish at the rim sometimes allows that big man to just kind of stay in the paint, and he does not have the strength to go through a big man yet. And hopefully he works on that. But because of, the, of that inability to really score off the pick and roll, driving right into the lane and laying it up, defenses aren't really that willing. They don't really have to, you know, rotate another guy over to come and stop him. That's the reason why he's not able to create open shots for his, open, open, for his teammates that often. So Lonzo, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, he is going to help this Bulls team if he comes to the, to the Bulls. But the playmaking is still going to be an issue unless Karnaschovas adds a guy like Derrick Rose, right? Or Jalen Brunson, right? But he needs to, if Lonzo's really going to be the PG of the future, he really needs to work on his ability to make a shot because that's going to open up everything else and have and opens up the ability to pull in multiple defenders and open up sh uh, shots for his teammates. This is the reason why I'm a little bit concerned. I'm, you know, I think Lonzo is coming to the Bulls. But I don't think the playmaking uh, is going to be solved if, if it's just Lonzo coming to the Bulls. And even after, let's say, you know, like Lonzo and Rose comes to the Bulls, or come to the Bulls this season, that's just a temporary fix for the playmaking, right? Rose is not going to be here for you know, you know, four years down the line. So I think the Bulls really need to start looking at, like, can we find that, uh, that extra playmaker? And it doesn't have to come at the PG position, right? It can come at the small forward position. Hopefully Patrick Williams can become a really good playmaker, right? But it can't just be Lonzo. That can't be your sole savior of this Bulls team. And, you know, saying Lonzo and Levine together is an elite backcourt is stupid. They're, that's not an elite backcourt. That's a solid backcourt, but that's not an elite backcourt. So... I'm hoping that Karnaschovas realizes this and brings in a guy like Rose, and that's looking like a real possibility too. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. If you're new, new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And go ahead and leave your comments down below. I am more than willing to look at them, respond to them, but again, please be respectful. So, free agency should be starting as this video is released. Hopefully, uh, we get some crazy stuff going on because I'm very excited for this offseason. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.